Welcome into the fifth edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Weekly. I'm your host, Connor Ravchak. We have a lot to get to on this episode. The Jets had a super busy week. The Bombers, Sea Bears, and Gold Eyes all had games this week, so let's dive into it, starting with the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets had a jam-packed week, starting with Friday night, the NHL Draft. A lot of fans thought the Jets would be picking in the first round if they had traded Rutger McGroarty or Nikolai Ehlers, but neither of those trades happened, and the Jets had to wait until day two to make their first pick. 37th overall, the last piece of the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade from a summer ago, the Jets selected defenseman Alphonse Frey, a 6'1", Swedish defender who was an incredibly smooth skater. Jets fans, if you haven't already, go search up his highlights on YouTube. They are incredibly fun to watch, and Jets fans should be excited about this pick going forward. And the excitement doesn't stop there. In the fourth round, the Jets traded up and selected Kevin He. At 109th overall, Kevin He became the highest selected Chinese-born player in NHL history. He was a forward for the Niagara Ice Dogs of the OHL last season, and Huss actually did an interview with him and Alphonse Frey minutes after they were drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. If you haven't already, Huss and Remo putting out a ton of great content on the WST YouTube channel down in Vegas. Go check out those videos if you haven't already. The Jets made two more picks on Saturday. In the fifth round, they took Finnish center Marcus Kloppinen. And then in the sixth round, they took Kieran Walton, a six foot five forward who played with Sudbury in the OHL last season. And that is it. That's your Jets 2024 draft class. Some of the fewest picks they've had in years, but I thought they did great with the picks that they had. And that's just the first bit of news. We still got a ton to get to here. Development camp starts this week. There has not been a roster or a schedule released yet. All we know is that Rucker McGroarty, with the ongoing situation, he won't be attending Jets development camp as he did last year, but I'm still super excited to see a ton of these prospects at the Hockey for All Center with a ton of great content coming out on the WST YouTube. On Sunday afternoon, the Winnipeg Jets extended qualifying offers to the following players. Vili Hanala, Simon Lundmark, Logan Stanley, David Gustafson, and Cole Perfetti. All of these players now staying restricted free agents, and the Jets will negotiate a new contract with them over the next couple weeks and months. The last bit of news here, both coming on the blue line, Dylan DeMello re-signing for four years at 4.9 million with the Winnipeg Jets. Josh Morrissey's partner on that top pairing, he had a great season last year and it's great to see him back with the Winnipeg Jets. And lastly, Nate Schmidt's contract has been bought out. This hardly comes as a surprise as last year he was a third pairing defenseman making nearly six million dollars. He had just one year left and this frees up just over $3 million in cap space for the Jets to work with this season, but they'll pay out the rest of that deal over the next two seasons with the buyout. It feels like it was a crazy week in Jets land. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. But Huss and Remus, they had you covered all week long on the WST YouTube channel. Tons of content there if you want to go check it out. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers dropped to 0-4 after a 22-19 loss in overtime to the Calgary Stampeders. This comes after the Bombers actually threw their first passing touchdown of the season to tie the game and send it into OT. That was Chris Trevler to Drew Wolitarski to tie the game. And you might be thinking, Chris Trevler, yes, Zach Kleros left the game at halftime with an apparent rib injury, but Mike O'Shea told Derek Taylor on CGOB after the game that it was mostly precautionary and Zach Kleros is fine. We will be monitoring the injury reports all week long to see if Zach Kleros is truly good to go for the upcoming game July 5th against the Ottawa Red Blacks. But more on this game, I actually thought the defense took a big step forward in this game with Dietrich Nichols back on the back end. Evan Holm, I thought, had a great game. Bonds with an interception off of Meyer as well. It was the offense that failed to get going again. Brady Oliveira, 10 carries for just 26 yards. And like I said, Chris Trevler, not much action throwing and being the number one quarterback, but he actually led the drive to tie the game. So we might see more of him going forward in more of a dual threat role. But either way, the Bombers are 0-4, still searching for their first win of the season as we go past July long weekend. The Winnipeg Seabears continue to roll. They are 3-0 since cutting the former CEBL MVP in Teddy Allen. And this game was arguably their most impressive of the season. A 94-82 win over the Niagara River Lions. This game started out rough. Niagara started out with a massive run to begin the game. But then it was all Seabears from that point forward. 50% from the field, won the turnover battle, the three-point percentage, 43%. You're not going to lose many games when you're that hot from behind the arc. And Justin Wright Foreman set a CEBL record in this game with 16 assists. He picked up the final assist on the target score winner to Emmanuel Acott. A great night at Canada Life Center, and the Seabears continue to keep the good times rolling as they have won three straight games. 
The Winnipeg Gold Eyes had an up and down week to say the least. All six of these games coming on the road, starting in Chicago, taking on the Dogs. They dropped all three of those games before taking on the Gary Substro Railcats and winning all three of those games to keep their record at an even 500, 23 and 23. As we near the halfway point of the Gold Eye season, they'll return home late next week. You can catch them at Blue Cross Park. You'll be able to catch some new players this week as the Gold Eyes added two new outfielders to their lineup. The latest being Caden Schwab who played with Fargo Moorhead most recently as this year in the American Association. So you'll be able to catch those two new signings this week starting Friday, July 5th and through the weekend for the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Now it's time to hand out the three stars of the week, but before we do that, hit the like, hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this and all the great content we're putting out here on the WST YouTube channel. Let's get into the three stars of the week. My third star of the week is Goldeyes infielder Ramon Bramasco. I say infielder because he moves from third to second to short seemingly every single day, but he's putting on a great season. His batting average, one of the highest on the team at 300. He had seven RBIs this past week while the Goldeyes were on the road. And as you can see, 15 RBIs, 22 walks, and 19 runs so far. He's putting together a great 2024 season. Ramon Bramasco, my third star of the week on WST Weekly. My second star of the week, he was the first star last week. Justin Wright Foreman, the point guard for the Winnipeg Sea Bears. I couldn't not put him on this list after he set a CEBL record for assists in a game with 16. He continues to drive the bus offensively for the Winnipeg Sea Bears, who have now won three straight games with him being the key cog offensively. 25 points a game, three rebounds, eight assists, 40.2% from the field, and 38% from three on the season for JWF. He'll continue to be one of the top scorers in the CEBL going forward as the Seabirds wrap up their homestand this week. Justin Wright Foreman, my second star of the week on WST Weekly. And here it is, my first star of the week, Connor Hellebuck. How could I not give it to him after he won his second Vesna Trophy of his career? These numbers are just absurd. 60 games played, 37-19-4 record with a 2.39 goals against average, a .921 save percentage, and 33.1 goals saved above expected per money puck. Second place was Thatcher Demko with 22, so that race wasn't even close. And Connor Hellebuck came one vote away from being a unanimous winner, 31 to 1. Sergei Bobrovsky receiving the other first place vote. Oh, so close for Connor Hellebuck to being a unanimous Vesna Trophy winner, but he did accomplish something historic. He's one of only two US born goaltenders to win two or more Vesna trophies, the other being Tim Thomas of the Boston Bruins. Connor Hellebuck in some elite company. And need I remind Jets fans, his extension for seven years kicks in this season. So he is going to be a Winnipeg Jet for a long, long time. Connor Hellebuck, my first star of the week on WST Weekly. Here's the upcoming sports schedule here in Winnipeg for the summer sports scene, starting with the 0-4 Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They'll look for their first win of the season at Princess Auto Stadium Friday night against the Ottawa Red Blacks, who beat the Bombers in week two of the season. A little bit of a revenge game. Hopefully the Bombers can get a win. Hopefully their players can stay healthy through that game. A lot of intrigue going into that one as the Bombers look for their first of the season. The Sea Bears, they're going to wrap up a five-game homestand on Wednesday, July 3rd when they take on the Edmonton Stingers. They'll look to make it four straight wins. They're one of the hottest teams in the CEBL right now. They'll look to keep that rolling. Justin Wright Foreman, like I said, driving the bus offensively. We'll see if he keeps that rolling on Wednesday. The Winnipeg Gold Eyes, they have a few road games to start the week, but then they'll return home on Friday, July 5th through the weekend, taking on the Fargo Moorhead Red Hawks. Like I said, the Gold Eyes are 500, some new signings, the bats are starting to wake up a little bit, so some exciting baseball being played at Blue Cross Park. Go check them out this weekend, Friday, July 5th through the weekend and into next week against Fargo. And this episode is coming out Monday, which means NHL free agency is starting today at 11 a.m. Central. The Jets, not typically a team that's gonna make a ton of big splashes in free agency, but we'll still have you covered here on the WST YouTube channel, Tuesday through Friday. Huss and Remus breaking it all down, any signings that do occur for the Winnipeg Jets, but watch league-wide as the NHL free agency period opens. That's going to do it for me, the fifth edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Weekly. Thank you everyone for checking it out. If you haven't already, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this every single Monday morning. I'll have you covered with the games next week. Enjoy the games this week if you're headed to some of them. I'll see you all next Monday morning. Have a great week, everyone.